Good evening, everyone. I'm Al Latkins. I serve as chair for the Nebraska Cowman Cow Calf Council. On behalf of the council, I'd like to welcome you tonight uh, for our part four of our market information on drought driven decision. Um, you know, as cattlemen across Nebraska, we are concerned with the drought we're in right now. I know we've got some timely rains, but uh, we're a long ways from being through our drought. But uh, hope this will provide uh, pertinent information, market information, and other information to help you navigate through the season of drought. Uh, we hope you find this information helpful. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us tonight. I'd like to thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank yeah. you, Al. Thanks, Al. Um, this is Benita Lettier with the Nebraska Cattlemen. Just want to welcome everybody tonight. Just a couple of housekeeping things. If you have a question for our panel, um, please type that in the Q&A box, and we will be sure to get your question asked to the panel. We hope that you've enjoyed our market information for drought-driven decisions webinar series, and we want to encourage you to watch your email in the next few days for a survey to give us some feedback on this series. With this information that we get from you, we'll be able to plan more producer ed meetings and webinars. We do have a Cattle Edge webinar scheduled for Tuesday, May 24th at 1230 p.m. Central Time. Farm Credit Services of America will be discussing the LRP program and how it can benefit your operation. More information can be found on our Nebraska Cattlemen website. We wanna welcome our panel tonight. We have members from the Nebraska Livestock Markets Association. We have Jake Mauer and Shane Kayser with Bassett Livestock Auction. Rich Robertson with Crawford Livestock Market. Greg Arndt with Livestock, with Valentine Livestock, kind of, sort of. And Bryce Dibburn with Region, who serves as the Region Executive Officer for LMA. Um, these guys here tonight invite you to a round table discussion. They wanna hear from you. They also wanna share with you some things. We're gonna start kind of our conversation with tonight with what's been going on, what they're seeing in the market right now. So, and then we'll kind of go into um, maybe some suggestions on if we do get into a drought situation and that we need to sell cattle, if these guys are here to help you. So I'm gonna turn it over to the panel and ask that question of, What's been going on and what are you seeing right now? Uh, is that for us? Is that for livestock auction people? Is yeah, that that's asking? for you. Let okay. me hear from you. So, uh, so, uh, so currently, um, I would say in, uh, in the northern regions of uh, Nebraska and the south regions of South Dakota, there's a variance in rainfall from um, three quarters to an inch to four or five inches of rain here in the last 30 days. And so consequently, you have people that are in, in somewhat good shape as far as rainfall. And then you've got those that uh, are just getting by and they're still contemplating what their situation is. You know, and I, and, and I think uh, there's a certain amount, it depends upon whether or not you're in metal country or your dependence upon your hill country, all right? And uh, if you live along the Dismal River, um, uh, ma'am, if you live along the Dismal River and you had four or five inches of rain, you're, you're probably thinking things are pretty good. And, uh, and if you uh, live uh, in Mullen, Nebraska, and uh, you've had a half an inch of rain and you don't have very many meadows, you're probably not thinking things are very good. And then if you live up here, in South Dakota where they had four or five inches of rain, um, that's okay, but then you go to uh, um, Martin, South Dakota, maybe they get an inch and a half. You know, they got a different soil type up there and, and they're probably going to have adequate uh, moisture conditions for a while. And, um, you know, they gotta be somewhat optimistic. I, I think I seen a, I never seen a planter. I, I don't, I, I like to know how many rows they could plant you know, out here east of Valentine, six, 10, 10 miles. I, I think that thing had 36 rows in it. I, it was unbelievable. And uh, there's, they're planting corn today. So apparently they, they think they're gonna have uh, enough moisture to uh, grow some corn here. And so th that's happening. That was dry land, that's dry land. So um, in our, in, so in this region, 
Um, we have people that somewhat optimistic, somewhat pessimistic, and then you got those that are sitting on half an inch of moisture thinking about selling cows and how they're going to market them. And they're going to market them probably either in uh, June or July at, at to get rid of the, the low end of their cows. And, uh, and they're going to hope to maybe get to August before they have uh, pulled the panic button. Um, and if this is like 012, in 012, we saw uh, some calves sold in August and September. Um, we saw a lot of early weaning. And uh, so there's, um, you know, the difference is that we have $8 corn and in 012, what, what was corn price? Um, probably what, five bucks, four bucks, something like that. Half of what it is today, you know, and there's, no, there's I, a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of roughage crop potential. And, uh, and those people are going to have the backgrounders. If you got uh, any kind of um, uh, um, uh, backgrounding situation and, and, and roughage uh, potential, you're, you're not going to have any problem finding cattle to background. Uh, Cause I think there's going to be uh, a need for those people to place their cows somewhere. Um, I, I, I don't know if Shane and Jake uh, are going to see, uh, are you going to see a lot of cows move off of the ranches and go to corn stalks? Uh, that potential I think exists if it doesn't rain enough this summer, you know, and, uh, and I, 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 I think we're going to see that in this area of the world. So, so what uh, are we seeing up at the, at, at Bassett, Shane and Jake? On our part of the world, we're, you know, we're, we're sand hills like Greg is, but, uh, you know, this, this moisture was substantial for the next 30 days. It, it made a hay crop for us, probably, you know, doubled what, what the production was going to be three weeks ago with the moisture we've had, but we get 90 100 degree days these pastures you know it's going to go through four four inches of moisture pretty quick uh you know like we we gotta have continued rain there's no doubt about it uh you know our we we have we was fielding a lot of calls on cows guys thinking about marketing cows you know wondering what to do this and that I guess our opinion was with me and Shane is is if you if you kept back a bunch of replacement heifers, that market was pretty good on that, still good on them replacement heifers, even on the feeder market. If you can retain them cows that's got calves on the ground, that this thing's gonna get better at some point in time and i think it's gonna happen pretty quick just like it did in 11 12 13 in that area area you know i i i think you if you can get to the fall and what our personal opinion is is the feeder market's not in dire straits right now it, it's still pretty good but the pair market, you know, with the numbers we're seeing, it, it it's still pretty good. But you know, the next thirty days, we're we're only thirty days from a drop in the sand hills again. You know, we start getting ninety hundred degree days. But uh, you know, I, I I I'm not one to get the cart ahead of the horses, so to speak. God has a way of taking care of these these people in our business, and I think. You know, you can't hold on forever. I understand that. But, uh, you know, the big cost of, of the cattle industry is behind us now. You know, the next 30 days is going to tell a lot. You, if, you know, if, if we got to market cattle, the feeder market's not in dire straits. But, you know, the pair market, it could put pressure on the pears and the fall cows in our area if it don't continue to rain. But, uh, you know, it, that's my jest on it. Every ranch operation is a little different. You know, everybody's feed stuffs and the way some guys got cake and range and some guys don't. So, you know, it, well, you about got to handle them on an individual basis. You know, your producers. Two weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago here, they were just dumping cows. Um, guys calling them three loads of cows, four loads of cows. 
Kevin right now, and it was it was time. They had to do it. They had to move them. And uh, now, right here, five inches of rain in uh, in one day, four and a half to five, and have had a couple since. There's still some dry areas uh, to the southeast of us here hasn't had as much rain, but everybody's spirits have picked up. Um, I sure wouldn't say we're out of the woods yet, but it's looking a lot looking a lot better than it did. Uh, we have uh, we have 1,100 uh, cows in town tomorrow. Pairs, 700 plus pairs. Uh, we've got 400 plus cows that are either calving now or or uh, fall calving cows. And I don't know. I'm pretty optimistic because I've been here eight years. And the first two years I was here, the phone rang nonstop when we had a cow sale. It would just ring and ring and ring. Greg's been through this numerous times, but the last two years when you have a cow sale, the, the phone doesn't ring. Uh, the office phone doesn't ring, the cell phone doesn't ring very much. And you kind of wonder, two weeks ago or three, when we had our last uh, bread cow and pear sale, you're like, where in the heck are we going to send these things? And uh, there always seems to be some place in the country that, that's got a little moisture and, and somebody, you know, there's some buyers come from somewhere. But I'm not... Uh, I'm not saying tomorrow's going to be a runaway by no means, but I've had more dang, we've had more calls on, on bread cows and pears than I've seen in years. So a um, little bit of optimism out there with the rain. Uh, I guess that's my take. That, that's uh, I can uh, concur with that. We had a pear sale last week and, and um, we, we sent cattle to Oklahoma, Iowa, Illinois, North Dakota, South Dakota, um, Kansas, and uh, there, there's people with moisture. There's people who want to buy cows, and um, maybe we don't send them local, but uh, uh, there's definitely a, a, a definitely a, an interest level that's way better. Like you said, a month ago it wasn't this good. It's way better. Now. Yeah. Well, Rich, do you want to give us a report on uh, the Crawford area? I think Rich is on here. Right. We got we, got we froze something. up. We had to log back in. We missed most of the house, so I'm not sure where we're at. We heard optimism for your pear sale tomorrow, and we had one on Friday. And same, we sent them all over. We had a a lot of interest, um, but not as much from our local people as from afar. So, how far are we um, shipping them after we sell them? In oh, we so? Oklahoma. Oklahoma um eastern nebraska i mean because we're as far west as you can get and still stay in the state but that being said we did send some to wyoming also there there's it's spotty you know like i'm sure you guys have noticed but it just depends on where they've got the half inch versus the three inches and in our local area we look pretty good right now but we don't know what the longevity of it's going to be if it doesn't kind of keep with it here but 27.75 on a nice uh, three and four year old cow is a pretty good ticket, no matter what the situation is. So I'm um, gonna ask a question here of the panel that came in a little bit earlier today. Uh, we asked people to send questions in if uh, they wanted to do it that way. Are you seeing the, the pairs staying as pairs then? I'm gathering that's what you're saying instead of breaking them up and selling them as cutters and, and baby calves. <clears throat> Everything we marketed last week as a pair left the barn as, as a, a pair. pair. But we had a lot of front end cattle last week, guys. We haven't had, we haven't gotten to the point where the old cows, they're the first ones to go, are coming to town yet. But, you know, we're poised for it, we're braced for it, but that's why we're discussing what we are tonight, because we know it's probably looming, but we haven't reached that level of, of panic yet. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, Is that true across the other barns as well? Can you jump in anytime you want or you got to be asked? I think you can be on whenever you want to. <laughs> hey, this Shane again. <laughs> you know, <Denver's laughs> weeks ago, uh, on our last bread sale here where I was saying these guys are just sending these cows that hadn't calved yet, just dumping them. Um, most of them cows go to kill with a baby in them, ready to calve right now because there's nobody... 
nobody local to buy. There's no feed, um, no nothing. I, I sure expect that to be different tomorrow. I think the the tide has has turned. Um, well, your young and middle aged cows will go back to the country. The, the, the young, the young did. You're right, yeah. young and male. But we had a lot of them cows, seven, eight, nine, ten year old uh, bred calving right now. Some of them calving at the at the barn, and they went they went to kill. Yeah. Part of that is the supply and demand, and uh, you know, the market, the kill market on them cows is off the pretty good. As yeah. as I've seen in yeah. 10, 12 years. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's good, good kill market on the cows. You know, he way up a cow brings a thousand dollars. That's that's good as we've seen a long, long time. Yeah, that's pretty encouraging when you see the statistics that 60% of the cow herd in the nation is in a drought situation, and we still these, see these killer prices hanging in there. So that's pretty optimistic. I'll tell you why. They, they know what's coming. Um, when it, and it did finally rain, and then there's going to come a day in the next month when there won't be cow, there won't be way up cows through a big area up here, and uh, they, they are stockpiling them. They knew, they know what's coming. And we still have to fill up McDonald's hamburgers. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. If you do have a question out there in the audience and you'd like to ask, please type it in the Q&A box. Um, Rich, earlier today when we were talking, you were talking about a weaning protocol that you maybe were thinking about. Do you mind sharing a little bit about that? Well, this was uh, in conjunction with our uh, Zoetis drug rep, and um, I don't know how many of you know Travis Winslow, but anyway, um, I do put a lot of merit into what he has to recommend as far as vaccines, but we were talking about trying to put together a very informal meeting here in the next two, three weeks to, to maybe lend a hand on helping uh, our producers prepare for an early weaning scenario, which is something we haven't really had to look at on a broad basis for a long time. But, you know, we are such an optimistic group. I mean, I, that's what's propelled us to be, to have the longevity we've had before. It's, it's more of a, a conversation we wanna have with people to prepare themselves to start thinking about that likelihood. And then also, once we get to that point, then be able to to have have something in place for them to follow that would, uh, you know, help us be able to market those calves that are coming to town. You know, maybe as early as July that normally we would sure love to rather see in October and November. But um, that's something that we were going to build here and invite our our local customers to come attend and. And you know, and have a stake and visit about what we need to be, be prepared for. So that was what that was about. Well, I think that's great, and I think that we do need to be prepared, um, and but opt also optimistic. Exactly. We hope it doesn't come to that, but uh, we need to have a plan in place in case it does. And um, but also at the same token have something realistic that people can employ that isn't going to, uh, in their mind, be cost prohibitive, perhaps, if that makes sense, guys. But, you know, it's just another, it seems like every, the last three, four years, it's it's been something different that's been coming at us from sideways that uh, now I think we actually kind of see this coming. So we need to, to be proactive instead of reactive would be my humble opinion. Do the other barns, do you guys see that our producers that are selling cattle are involved in the BQA program and, you know, sending cattle that are well taken care of and, and um, that they're doing protocols and pieces like that? Um, well, it depends what kind of producer you are, you know, and, and uh, so some guys, uh, uh, you know, they think it's going to rain. They're going to think they're going to get there and, and they vaccinate their calves in the spring. Um, they haven't probably changed that. I mean, um, Shane and Jake, I'm sure what 
ninety percent of your producers uh, vaccinate on pretty pretty decent. Um, you know, they do a you know a profile of seven way, five way, poron, Dectamax, something. Ninety um, plus percent, I would say, Greg. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so the preparation you need to prepare for a drought is, uh, is number one is get feedstuffs in line. That's number one. Okay. And, uh, because, um, what are you going to do about your cows? You know, are you going to haul them off if you have drought? Are you, are you going to sell them? Um, or are you going to have a herd reduction? And, um, um, I think, uh, the bulk of your, uh, cattle you're selling tomorrow and Bassett is a, uh, there's a lot of herd reduction. You know, we're gonna get rid of the cows that are taking up space that either are 10 years old, 11 years old, and they're not my best cows. And, um, and that's kind of what we did last week in Valentine. Uh, we had a complete dispersion from one outfit. It wasn't drought related, uh, but at the same time, um, um, the cows were not in um, great condition. Uh, I thought we, uh, you know, considering their condition score, they were well received. And um, so, um, you know, this is a time of the year when uh, a Sandhills cow doesn't look her best. You know, it's kind of like uh, the freshman girl. She, uh, she, she's not ready for the prom. I mean, she's a junior. She's going to be ready for the prom, you know. And, uh, you know, and that's the same thing. Those Sandhills cows this time of the year just don't look re ready for the prom. And uh, so, uh, but, you know, considering uh, the market conditions and, uh, and and Shane and Jake touched on it. In uh, 35 days, we've had we've done a 180. Uh, we have people somewhat thinking now that we're going to make it through the summer. Um, I think uh, uh, producer inquiry into what kind of sales we were going to have uh, in May and June were at a very high level on the first day of April. And uh, what we're going to do to liquidate uh, all these females, and now we have uh, some semblance of we're going to stay put. We're going to um, we're going to think that we're going to make it through the summer, and uh, so that that that's part of our our, our profile right at the moment. And uh, um, and I'm hoping that uh, um, um, that that does happen, you know. But there's going to be places where they get two inches of rain and. And them, them people that go to church every Sunday in Bassett, uh, they get five, you know, and uh, daggone it, you know, then I, you guys uh, just go to church. I better. That and it didn't work at my place, dang it. Yeah. Well, well, don't be <laughs> admitting that you don't go to church, you know. <laughs> you know, so, but it, it so, you know, I, I think uh, as far as uh, what people do to profile their cattle, you know, uh, there's there's enough communications out there and uh, different from 012, right? 10 years ago, did you have an iPhone in your house? Anybody? Did you have an iPhone? Nope. No. Hey, no were you a college ago. boy then, Bryce? 10 years ago? Yeah. Did you know what an iPhone was? I didn't. Started. Shit. I, I had no idea. You know, now everybody's got an iPhone. So we, you know, do, you know, the communication aspect of what's going on here is that uh, you, you can find out where uh, feed is on Facebook, you know, and uh, if you got this energetic office gal over here, works in my office, and then she puts your name out there, we need hay, we get five phone calls, you know, that uh, we got some $200 a ton hay that's sitting out here in this meadow that we can't get to, but we sell it to you for $200. Hey, it's kind of like buying swamp land in Florida. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't really want it, but uh, you know, but uh, uh, so, so today compared to 012 uh, drought, it's, it's even different. You know, we have communication devices that, you know, lend us to selling cows probably, at, you know, it, even in seven days, you can actually round up a pretty good posse of buyers and sell uh, five, six, seven hundred pairs, and um, and not like it, like Robinson said that we don't split a one. We sell them all as pairs. They they bring above, and thank goodness the way up cow market finally reached a point where it feels good, you know. And um, we've been getting drugged through the mud like a goddamn baby calf at a Brandon uh, for the last six years uh, with with this way up market. And everybody's been optimistic, you know, 
but uh, you know, we finally got rid of all these damn dairy cows. And uh, so we don't have this glut of dairy cows sitting around the corner. We don't have this glut of beef cows sitting on the, on the West coast or in the South. And so consequently, we got a way up market that's kind of substantial and it needs to be that way. Should have, should have been this way the last four years, but it hasn't been. So, you know, okay. the, the Nebraska cattlemen, if you're listening, if you're listening, you need to uh, write that down. Keep so that Greg, you brought up, up technology, yeah. brought up technology. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the video auctions and how that's changed and how that will play a role in our summer markets here. And that question is for anybody here in the group. Well, this is Alicia at Crawford Livestock and a lot of ours that will be selling in, that would be selling in Reno in July have already come to the barn because they couldn't hold out. And they certainly can't hold out till the end of July delivery. So our numbers on the video sale, specifically in July, are going to be quite substantially less than they have been in years past. Any other input? <clears throat> Any thoughts? I guess I have one thing to say addressing um, I guess if we're talking about technology and um, marketing differences is, uh, you know, guys, selling a pair in the country is, is a lot different deal than trying to go out on somebody that might not have a load lot of yearlings. We know that they've got, say, twos, threes, fours, and fives. We can assign a value to those. Go out and video, video them show them on the screens in the ring and not have to bring the cows and calves to town, which is something that we're looking at doing more as we move on. But um, as far as an avenue, you know, like my wife alluded to, uh, the yearlings on the big, the big stages on our big video sales, it's gonna be different this year, but we very well might see more pairs moving in, you know, due to, uh, in-house videos, perhaps, if that makes sense. And, our, and we're connecting with customers from all over. We talked about that earlier because of our videos. I would say, uh, I mean, I think Greg touched on that with the iPhone, but that uh, in my days here, you know, uh, with the internet running the whole time, the it's it's really picked up the amount of cattle that we do sell to go through the ring that are bought uh, off the internet um uh, i think a lot of that has to do with uh i think greg touched on that the facebook you know, just the different ways that you can advertise anymore it used to be if you'd had a pile of pears at, at one sale barn in a dry area you'd have been scared to death because who in the heck all is going to know about it or where they're going to go and Anymore, it just seems like if you click on this place and we have a pretty big sale, you can see how many people are logged in around the country watching uh, what we do here that they can bid. And so uh, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's really helped. Well, and you know, you guys know this very well, even though that uh, the video bidding might not lead to them being the winner sure as hell helps us get to yeah. where we're going to get to, you know, in the ring too. And four. But as far as, uh, as uh, you know, I think what we were all talking about here is we're a lot more interconnected than we have been in the past. However, with that connection, there is a lot of garbage out there that we kind of have to sift through occasionally, you know, to get to, get to the reality of some situations, but that's part of it. But uh, it definitely the world hasn't gotten anything but smaller, it feels like. Oh, it's nice to see that we can even figure out how to be on a damn Zoom meeting <laughs> against our will. Thanks to your wives. <laughs> Exactly. Right <laughs> I wouldn't be on here. My future, my, I'm using my future daughter-in-law's uh, laptop. 
<laughs> she, she hooked it up. I'm, I'm sure you guys all got a kick out of listening to her. So, yeah. So Greg kind of touched on this earlier. Uh, another question was about liquidation that we're seeing that's maybe not drought related. People that are just saying, I've had enough of this. Are you seeing that across your different barns? Greg said he had a, a dispersal dispersion that was uh, not drought related. Uh, is that happening with your other barns? It's, it's oh, oh. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say it's happening out here because if you've been out here, there's pine trees and it's beautiful. And so they, there is some there. There are some loss of, you know, leases, Colorado, people from Colorado are moving here and they're buying the land at $1,500 an acre. And, and we can't sustain that. Ranchers can't sustain that, but people that want to have a hobby farm or things like that, that's what's affecting us here for land, for real estate. Well, I think it's affecting all the state in Nebraska. Yeah. Also. I mean, it, yeah. it amazes me the amount of people that, you know, that are out there that, that We'll put a thousand fifteen hundred cow ranch together, and they they don't really care whether they stock it. They they can make enough money leasing it out or just rent yeah. summer grass off. Of well, the, the money money come from somewhere else yeah. to begin with, and so yeah, it doesn't really have to. It's a place to go hunt or uh, yeah. exactly yeah. recreation. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in the last few years, we've had a lot of them that just said, this thing isn't working. And I, Jake and I both run cows and quite a few of them and always have before we got into this. And uh, this thing, this thing hasn't worked in, in a few years uh, for any of us on the cow calf side, not very well, scraped by. So yeah, we have had uh, people just exit. I, I think that's going to stop. I think we're in for a couple of really good years coming if we can hold on. You guys been reading uh, Pat Goggins' column, have you? I, I you don't. Know, he's, been, he's, been dead, he's been dead a couple of years, but I can remember Pat Goggins wrote for about six years in a row, Shane. I know this market's going to turn yeah. around. And, you know, and by gosh, his son Joe said the same thing at Keneally's Bull Sale. You just got to be patient and hang in there, you know. And, Greg, and, uh, I got his book. His book is his autobiography is laying by my bed. It's a okay, well, it's a huge uh, one, and I'm about three fourths of the way through it. So that might be where it comes from. That, that's probably that where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. I'd say I'd say you're right. Yeah. When you get that sucker read, send it over. I want to read it. Yeah. I'll yeah. do yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, no, I you know, but yeah, the, the optimism is important. Uh, but realism is also important. And yep. the realism is we got $5 diesel, we got $8 corn, and uh, you got rent at $65, $70 a pair. And you got, uh, and, and yet there's no, there's not a substantial amount of grass in some places. So the realism is that, um, that as we approach this uh, potential better market, um, and I don't think you'd disagree with me, but when we were selling $900 to $1,000 steer calves weighing five and a half, uh, 600 pounds last year, and, and then, you know, there's always those few guys who get $1,100. The realism that we need $1,200, $1,300 calves, and a year ago, I would have said you need $1,100 calves. But the realism that th these input costs, uh, a, a ton of hay is going to cost you $70, $80 a ton to make this year if, you're, if your potential metal does not produce more than a ton and a half. Am I right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 that's, the, that's the realism. And, and so as, as we move forward, how are you going to keep these cow-calf operators situated in a, in a positive manner if we don't get $1,200 for these calves this fall? And... Um, and, 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 and uh, you know, guys, uh, yeah, there's $1.45 fat cattle. It, it sounds great. You know, the numbers, you know, kind of look pretty cozy, but uh, there's some guys out there that are just selling these cattle for a little bit of a profit. And, uh, 
and, there, and there's obviously some that are making pretty dang good money. Uh, so the balance of power, you know, it, yeah, we'd like to have it shift to the cow calf operator for a couple of years. Um, but we got to have them in business. We don't have to, we don't want them out of business. You know, Nebraska cattlemen, you, you guys, uh, you know, you keep track of your feedlots. I'm sure you keep track of some of these cow calf operators, but at the same time, we need these people to be in business. And, um, and the only way to do this is, uh, you know, th there's an expense model out there that uh, it's, it's too high and uh, we need to, we need to correct that. And, um, and it, and it's, of course, you're not going to correct it with uh, state policy. You're going to have to correct it with national policy and you're going to have to correct it with uh, uh, people that are, uh, um, um, that are influential in your, from your state in the national level. And, um, and that, 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 it, that it in itself is probably as big an item as this drought. Yeah, because, um, you know, it could rain. Like, you know, you guys get four or five inches of rain. You know what? You're in pretty good shape. I mean, you get another three or four inches between now and the uh, 10th of June. Um, you know, life's going to be pretty good on the top of a sand hill, you know, and there's going to be some grass and cow's going to, you know, she's going to have some nutrition. You know, but uh, five dollar diesel and um, um, eight dollar corn, uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna put an edge on our uh, potential profitability. You know, you go back and look. Um, in 1996, we had five dollar corn. April 26, April 26th in 1996, corn hit five bucks. the The futures contract for feeder cattle was up down the limit every day that week, down the limit. And corn was up the limit every day. We went to $5 corn. And we had $5 corn clear into September. Now I talked to an old man back in Iowa this morning and he said they, the coffee shop in Iowa, they, they took bets on the November 1st price of corn. What, what do you think they took bets on? Do you think they took bets on $5 corn, $8 corn or $9 corn? What do you think was the, the primary price? Nine. Nine bucks. Nine dollar corn. That's what and I just know. said. That's what yeah. they're getting on. Yeah, yeah nine dollar corn. So you, you, that, you tell me, you, you guys, okay. so Nebraska cattlemen people, you tell me how we're going to sustain cow calf operators with nine dollar corn. Well, and on top of that, Greg, it ain't just the corn. The roughage is, you know, this, this hay and roughage supply. There's so much of it moved out of our country. Any any excess moved west and north. I mean, there there's not we, roughly we, we, we never saw we never saw the amount of movement of hay ever. This is in a massive life. amount. This is bigger than 012. Yeah, uh, yeah the amount, the amount of feed that's left the country. There the the only bales that are left out there are these guys that know how to call it insurance. And they have two years or a one year or three years crop. And there's not very many of them. Most well, but this drought's different in twelves too, though, Greg, because it, it hit Texas harder and south of us harder in twelve. Exactly. Them yeah. guys, a lot of them cows come up here. Uh, right. You know, we was dry enough a year ago. The the west and northern cows, there was an apple feed for them to come down come to this part of the country, Nebraska, so to speak, just because of the, you know, everybody was fretting drought across the state of Nebraska. It started a year ago, you know, exactly. rightfully yep. so, rightfully yep. so. But this, this feed cost is not going to change in the next month or two months. I think this corn can come down. I, I'm, I'm optimistic it can. In 12, we've seen all-time record high corn in June. By July 1st or 10th, it, it come down to two bucks. It hit 770 in 12. And I said at that time, I said, it's too high to feed anything. Even the integrated hogs and chickens can't afford to feed 770 corn in, in 12. It, it's uh, and that, and that, that it's might play well to that might play well to uh, beef consumption. Well, we got a question. It, it, Oops, sorry, I didn't interrupt you guys. We got. I didn't mean to interrupt, and we have a participant asking a question. Um, 
And we'll start with uh, Jake and then we'll go to Rich and then we'll go to Greg. Are you seeing more, less, or about the same volume in your sales at this time? I think Rich. Thanks first. Well, I can tell you our, our numbers are down. I mean, our numbers are down, but they ebb and flow within, you know, a thousand to 800 to maybe we'd be down 2,500 and then up 2,800. I mean, when you look back historically, I do a month end every month and I always compare it to the previous year, but then I look at the year before also. Um, and I do that just, you know, for many reasons, but we're, we're down about 512 head today, last Friday that we were exactly the same sale the year before. Um, but we're one sale up last year that we didn't have this year, just the way the calendar fell. So quite honestly, we're about steady where we were, but we were inundated with cows last year. So when I look at 2019, our numbers are up. But last year, man, did we have a lot of cold cows come to town in our part of the world. And they should have been cold in 2017. And they finally <laughs> made it to town in 2020. So, Jay? We still, see, we still see a, you know, we've still been having big runs of way up cattle consistently. I'd say like maybe take one sale out of this year we're probably seeing as many cows as we've ever seen, you know, from January through, through May, I would think. So what's Bassett seeing? We, uh, you know, our, our sale last couple of weeks, we, we haven't sold abnormally high numbers. There there's producers around that would have took, we, we probably sold a thousand to 2000 cattle that would have went to grass just to lighten the load to make sure they had enough grass to get the yearlings they had on hand to August, September. You know, I mean, there's pre-planning with some of them guys already They, you know, but they, they're the upper echelon of the entrepreneurs that are taking care of their grass year after year. You know, they, they want to be able to turn out early and, uh, you know, but our, our numbers have been fairly consistent. Uh, you know, there's been years in the last two years, we've had thousand web cows, you know, in, in April. So, you know, I think two, two, three weeks ago, we had 800 or a little over and the following week we had 500. Yeah, it, it seems exuberant, but, uh, you know, it, it historically, you know, it runs in two to three year cycles, you know, it, it's, it, I, our, our numbers are staying pretty consistent at our barn, I guess, at the way, the way we're seeing it, 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 we, we have sold some cattle that would have normally come in probably August, September. I'd say a couple thousand of them so far, but uh, not. And our yearly numbers are going to be tight, shorter this summer and fall, no doubt. And the calf, calf numbers will be too. There's no yeah. doubt the amount of way of cows that's left this country. That, um, we're, I thought we'd see it by now, but there's no doubt that the amount of calves that uh, go through this place is going to be lower in the fall. They're, they're, the cows just aren't here. Greg, what are you seeing in Valentine? Oh, it's about the same. About the same as what uh, Jake said. Yep. Yeah. No, so. Bryce, do you have any comments to make? Um, I just, I just want to say that you know, these, these guys here at the markets, um, the Robertsons, Jake and Shane and Greg, them as well as everybody, everybody else that owns the market, these guys work day in and day out for their producers um, and for their buyers. They're on the phones nonstop. They're sorting stuff to make the right pin sizes and the right size of cattle and class. Um, but they're also on the phones talking to buyers from multiple different states. Um, 
these guys hate a drought just as much as the cattle producers themselves, but they also go above and beyond um, to do everything they can for them producers. And uh, so, I mean, they're, these guys are all in their markets currently still at eight or nine o'clock at night. Um, and this is just kind of the normal for them. So just want to give a shout out to what they do and what they do for their producers. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks. We Nebraska cattlemen really appreciate the uh, partnership that we have with the livestock markets. Um, we all know we can't do what we do without what you all do, and we appreciate it very much. So, Benita, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Yep. So, as we wrap up, I want to thank these guys uh, and gal for taking time out of their schedule to come and speak with us. Just wanted to some of the things that we've talked about with. Um, Tonight with talking about input costs and in the markets, we did cover some of this information in our first three webinars. So please, uh, you can view them on our website under producer education webinars. So check those out. And I'm going to turn it over to Steve Snettner here for some closing remarks. Uh, I would like to have one uh, Jacob Bassett. I mean, I, I've i been associated with this market for over 40 years, probably, but, uh, you know, I'd like to give a shout out that the Nebraska Cowman is a, a really good organization, what they've done with the corn fed beef program. I've said in my lifetime, uh, my dad would go three or four different states by feeder cow. And I always question why you wouldn't buy them locally. And it's kudos to the Nebraska producers and the Nebraska cattlemen. We got some of the best cattle in the world right here in the Midwest. And it's a pleasure to get to sell. And uh, it, it is, it's kudos to the producers who are watching this. And we'll be glad to help you out any way we can in your marketing needs whether it's drought issue or whatever, I think we can all work through this. But I, I, I do want to thank Nebraska Cowman because I think our two organizations is, uh, you know, as a whole are working for the producer's best interest. Well, Jake, I think that's well put. And Bryce, I want to thank you for saying what you said. Um, because at the end of the day, guys, we don't have a business without our producers. And that is, that is totally the total truth. Um, there's never been a day go by in my recent capacity in the last four or five years where I've ever felt completely satisfied with the job I did. That being said, you get to the point where you do the best you can. But I want to reiterate what these guys are saying. We are here to work for you and with you and to help you through this. Whoever might be listening, wherever you are, we we're just talking about how small the world is, folks. If there's something that, uh, that we can do for anybody in any capacity in your marketing, we are willing to help. Um, that being said, we are all in the same, we are in this boat together. We don't want to sell anything before. We would rather sell calves every fall for the rest of our lives not have to deal with a damn cow moving forward but we are here to do it because that is our job and we do take it seriously we are here tonight because this is our life just yeah. as it is yours so thank you guys for participating everybody on this uh meeting right now thanks So thank you from uh, half of the Nebraska cattlemen to the speakers, to those participants that took, that took part tonight. If you have any questions about your Nebraska cattlemen membership or how to come up, get a hold of either through our website or there's always uh, a, a place that we can communicate. Uh, thank you all and, and have a great evening. Yeah, you're welcome, Steve.